five famous figures from history whose wealth was obscenely enormous. In general, finding out who the wealthiest person in world history is is very difficult, if not impossible. Scientists calculate the fortunes of the rich of the past, converting the value of their property into gold, and then compare the resulting figures with the current value of this metal. Historians talk about five famous figures in history who were simply filthy rich. William I the Conqueror. This king from Normandy, affectionately nicknamed the Bastard by his French allies, became famous for conquering all of England and uniting it under his rule. The occupation, however, turned out to be positive for the country. William I the Conqueror established a unified system of government, built the tower and many other fortresses, created a regular army and navy, in general, turned the power into a great power. But his main achievement was conducting the first land census in England to get an idea of the state of the territories under his control. The collection of materials from the census of lands and property carried out by order of the king in 1085-1086 received the frightening name Book of the Last Judgment. Moreover, His Majesty enriched himself by issuing a special decree. According to him, all lands in England now belong to the monarch and dukes, earls and barons, not to mention ordinary people, are only tenants. This ensured a constant flow of funds into the treasury, but also caused dissatisfaction among taxpayers. Historian William Rubinstein estimates that the inheritance the ruler left to his sons Robert and Wilhelm is equivalent to 209 billion in modern money. Afiopa, not only in Europe, but also in America there were rich rulers. Notable among them is Atahualpa, the last Inca emperor, who is considered one of the wealthiest Native Americans. It is impossible to estimate its wealth approximately due to the lack of the concept of market and money among local tribes where the exchange of goods was carried out by barter. Inca society believed that the entire country, its property and population belonged to the emperor and there was nothing in the Andes that he did not own. However, Atahualpa's fortune can be roughly estimated by the amount he offered as ransom to the Spaniards who took him prisoner. After his defeat at the Battle of Cajamarca, the emperor was captured by the famous conquistador Francisco Pizarro. In captivity, Atahualpa showed exceptional ingenuity. When Pizarro entered the room where he was being held in chains, he offered to fill the room to the ceiling with gold for his freedom. Pizarro was amazed. Atahualpa continued by suggesting that the next room should also be filled with silver. Pizarro agreed to the deal. Despite the ransom, Atahualpa was still killed. But the ransom amount six tons of gold and twelve tons of silver plus another one. Five tons of gold and three nine hundred fifteen tons of silver taken by the Spaniards from the Inca Empire caused colossal inflation, a crisis in the monetary system and economic degradation in Spain for almost two hundred years. Although Atahualpa's gold did not save him, it was included in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest ransom ever paid for a kidnapped person. Jacob Fugger, although Jacob Fugger did not have his own state, he had enough money to acquire one if he wished. However, he did not need this, since all the influential people of that time were under his control. This 16th century banker and investor lived in Augsburg, Germany, and made loans to monarchs and popes. He initially made his fortune trading textiles with Italy, but then switched to mining, especially mercury and silver. Fugger achieved his wealth through careful investment control. He was one of the first in Europe to use double-entry bookkeeping. By distributing loans and receiving various profitable enterprises in return, Jacob became a monopolist in the mining industry. He controlled ore mines throughout Europe, and imposed debt on the most powerful aristocrats of the time. Why did these rich people choose to live in debt, giving their minds to the banker for indefinite use? They simply did not have good financial skills, unlike Fugger. Moreover, Jacob, despite his financial rigidity, was also a very devout Catholic. To focus on business and not worry about saving his soul, he took an original step. The banker built an entire block of 52 houses for the poor and settled the poor there. This was one of the first examples of social housing in history. 
Tenants paid a nominal fee of 1 guilder, equivalent to 0.88 euros by today's standards, but were required to pray for Fugger and his family three times a day. Musa I, Musa I was the supreme ruler of the medieval state of Mali from 1312 to 1337. During his reign, the empire reached its peak. Known for his excessive luxury Musa as a Muslim, was required to perform the Hajj to Mecca and he did it on a grand scale. He was accompanied by 60,000 servants and warriors, rows of slaves, and a caravan of 80 camels, each of which carried up to 136 kilograms of gold on its hump. He generously distributed all this goods along the way to demonstrate his wealth and loyalty to Ilam. This largus led to inflation and a decade-long financial crisis in Cairo, Medina, and Mecca. During his Hajj, Musa spent 18 tons of gold, claiming that it grew on the trees of his kingdom. He also encouraged the development of science and art, establishing a library in the capital of the Mali Empire, the city of Timbuktu. In addition, every Friday Musa built a new mosque. Octavian Augustus Octavian, the Roman emperor and grandnephew of Julius Caesar, unified Rome, conquered Egypt, Judea, Galatia, and Spain, established order in the country, and concentrated all state power in his hands, striving for the well-being of society. He also cultivated a cult of his personality, renaming the month of August in his honor, which was originally called Sextile. Octavian is undoubtedly one of the candidates for the title of the richest man of his time, because he owned the Roman Empire, which controlled 25 to 30 percent of the world economy at the time. Stanford University historian Ian Morris estimates that Augustus at one point had wealth equivalent to one-fifth of the empire's resources. He also inherited the province of Gaul from Julius Caesar as personal property and also owned all of Egypt. In conclusion, I wanted to tell you that as you noticed most of them were in power as emperors or kings or sultans. And when you have all the power in your hands, it is always easier to become a millionaire of your time. And we still have everything ahead, so everything depends only on us. I wish everyone good luck in finance and achieving success. Thanks for watching, support the channel by subscribing or leave your comments. All the best, see you in the next video.